internet friends, welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you uh, turn up your speakers so we can hear what you're saying. Turn them up. Okay. And if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, comment, and share with the rest of the world. So I've got a friend that's been uh, on before, and we're going to have him on again. His name is Jim, and his name is Jim Sweeney. Yes? That's absolutely right. Thanks for having me again, Brad. How's Mike doing? Mike is doing great. Uh, <laughs> when I'm doing great, Mike's normally doing great because... <laughs> He lives rent free in my head. I get it. Yeah, I got he this. goes everywhere with me. <laughs> I understand. So now you you live in Florida, right? Sunny Clearwater, Florida, on the uh, uh, Florida's yes. west coast in the Tampa Bay area. Been yes, here thirty three years and I love it. I interviewed your wife, I believe, and I said, "Where are you?" And she said, "On the west coast." And I go, "But you're on the west coast of Florida." Yes, we are. See, I was thinking East Coast, but it, so you got the East and West Coast right there in Florida. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. She probably <laughs> thought you were calling from the East Coast of Florida. That's why she said West Coast. <laughs> well, I'm calling from the Minnesota, the Arctic tundra. <laughs> you told me a story about that. You said you guys are making spit sickles or something. Uh, I did that about 40 years ago. It was the only time I'll ever do it in my life because I had the worst case of chapped lips uh, <laughs> that I will choose to forget at this point in time. It's not as bad as people think. You get used to it, and it's a lot warmer indoors, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, I forgot. Do you have kids, you and your wife? We have one child. My wife and I have been married 35 years. We have a 25-year-old daughter that lives in Brooklyn, New York, and she uh, is the director of a photo gallery in South Manhattan, and she loves it. What's a photo, what's a photo gallery? You mean like an art gallery? And uh, more than an art gallery, these are actually uh, photographs, and they're done by uh, photographers from all over the world. And she sells either one, or she sells an entire collection. Oh, I get it. It's almost like a National Geographic indoors. It is. Kinda it like. is, and the cool. entire store. It's a retail store, and they have showings there. They have events on a regular basis. It's just a really neat gig that she has. You know, I'm always just fascinated by the being able to interview a lot of people like I do and now and all the different kind of weird occupations that people do. And now with the inception of the Internet, there's people that drive Uber and stuff like that for a living. And yes. yes. So now you've got a kind of a weird business. You, you created a little cartoon called Mike. It's, it's <laughs> totally outside the box. I wouldn't say weird, but it's totally weird outside is good. the box. Quite unique. Um, I brought to life my alter ego uh, several years ago. Uh, I've had this affinity for sports, a love of words, I love humor, and I pull it, uh, put it all together, and I created a cartoon sports character by the name of Mike. Mike is short for Michael Anthony Raffone, or Mike Raffone, and he is a microphone, whom we call the ultimate talking head on sports. My goal with the character, and I've been at it for a few years now, but my ultimate goal is to get him licensed by a major sports network so that Mike would become the first ever animated brand to transcend all sports. Now, that's a big goal, but I feel that I'm the one uh, that has to do it. And I well, want to do it, and I know I'm going to do it. Well, they say the one with the mic has the power. So you got the mic, you got the power. So if they want to talk to anybody, they talk to you. Or they, Do they talk yes, to they Mike do. or they talk to you? Uh, both. Oh, so you're it's like, like Mike's two agent? for one in the deal. So but the <laughs> one thing, the challenge in whatever I do, I always have to remain in character. And when we first created the character of Mike, I did so with my, my wife, Maura, whom you uh, interviewed about a week ago. We set up a core set of ethics and values for the character. So there's all these things that Mike could never do and all these things that we want Mike to do. So that whenever we do something, whether it's a blog, a tweet, a Facebook post, you know, a podcast animation, Mike must uh, remain in character. He needs to abide by a core set of ethics and values that we've ascribed to the character. So over the last few years and all of the social media posts, 
all of the digital content that we've created, Mike has never used profanity. He's never said anything of a sexually derogatory nature. He's never said anything uh, intentionally that's racially offensive. Now, we recognize people can get offended by anything, anywhere, at any time. But in our case, we do our due diligence to make certain before we release something out into the digital internet space that we don't do anything that's uh, going to rub people the wrong way. So, Sometimes it might be controversial, but we like to think it's controversial in a good way that it sparks an animated conversation. So is Mike a handheld microphone or does Mike have a stand? Mike has a base. He's got an actually a, a moral base. Now the reason I ask <laughs> that is because, because does he stand during the national anthem? Uh, he's always standing. That's a good question, though. I like that. <laughs> yes, he does stand during the uh, national anthem. Okay. But it's interesting is that for part two, once we Mike gets his big deal, uh, the next iteration of Mike and his friends will be other microphone characters because Mike has a sidekick and he's Boomer and Boomer is a boom mic. He has a love interest who's Lavalier. I love and it. And Lavalier is a Lavalier mic. <laughs> but first, Mike has to become the first ever animated brand to transcend all sports. He needs to be a rock star in the cartoon world. And then we go from there. Now, when you say transcend all sports, remember I talked to you before, you're kind of focused on some of the major sports though, right? The major sports, but there are some sports that have had animated characters associated with them, like in the world of hockey, something you're probably very familiar with living in the state of Minnesota. Nah. Uh, a number of years ago, they had something called Peter Puck. Okay. And Peter Puck was an NBC sports property. And he was a Fox Sports property, but he was specifically assigned to the sport of hockey. Now, if you look at Fox Sports, if you turn on your TV on Sunday and watch NFL Sunday on Fox, you'll see Cletus, who's that blue transformer robot. And he's almost exclusively attached to the world of professional football. Now, Fox has endeavored to use Cletus on baseball telecasts and college football telecasts, but he doesn't do basketball. He doesn't do hockey. He doesn't do soccer. And when I say Mike will transcend all sports, is that all sports, they have referees, they have players, and usually somebody that reports on the game, if it's mm -hmm. going to be televised or on the radio. So Mike is a guy. He is the guy. That's why we call him the, as in T-H-E-E, the <laughs> ultimate talking head on sports. I love it. You put some thought um, into this. Uh, I <laughs> live and breathe it 24-7. <laughs> I like it. So... Is it possible that Mike can be cloned, or is there only one Mike, the Mike? If we, because we own the intellectual property rights, everything is copywritten, and Mike has been trademarked. So if anybody gets the clone Mike, uh, we would have to say so, and who clones Mike? But cool. right now there's Mike, and as I said, we have other plans for other microphones like Boomer and Lavalier, but we also have plans in the future for a Mike Jr. That could be a microphone character that we could have a cartoon series that could be specifically for a much younger demographic. But That's right now, even though Mike's a cartoon, uh, Mike really uh, goes up and down the demographic scale because we have a core set of ethics and values built into the character. You know, we feel very comfortable with a grandfather or a father sitting down with his kid, his five or eight year old kid, you know, reading a Mike book or reading a Mike blog or listening to Mike podcast or seeing Mike animation. So there's a lot of due diligence that's put into the crafting as well as the fine tuning of the. So do you do you have like a little notebook of all the things that you come come up and you stir up in your head and stuff? Absolutely. Okay, uh, I got a couple I come up for with something different. But Mike doesn't necessarily report on what's topical in sports. He'll do it every once in a while. Like I follow, I've done almost a thousand blogs over the last few years, and every Tuesday I'll do a two cent Tuesday, which is something that uh, is about uh, a topical event in sports, and Mike will exercise his opinion. But on Thursday, I do a throwback Thursday. So tomorrow is the uh, celebration of the Immaculate Reception Pass. I thought, I thought today football. is Thursday. Uh, yes, it is Thursday. So tomorrow <laughs> would be Friday, and I'll have a Friday sports funny, and sometime over the weekend I'll report on some type of a sports comic or sports comic book. So I always try to remain in character and get my content out there. But I'm always looking for content. And Mike views things through a different lens than most people. You said weird or strange. I like to say unique. I do too. Uh, he's a totally <laughs> unique character because he sees the world differently. It's like I, I really can't compete with the thousands of other bloggers out there that report on last night's game or this week's uh, standings or 
uh, upcoming championship. I have to look at things through Mike's eyes, through his lens, and report on things that I find or Mike finds humorous or audacious or crazy or flat out silly in sports. So yeah, it it's sounds like the, it sounds like a little bit like you're trying to put more fun back into sports because some of it's getting too competitive and angry and all that. But it it's ridiculously like competitive. A lot of money involved. You know, people just thirst to be a champion, make more money, sign a bigger contract if you're a pro. But the things that Mike looks at are all the things that you can see where it's a video at the tip of your nose, but not necessarily spoken of. Like I talk about uh, spitting in baseball. Mike wants to start a national campaign to expunge expectorating in America's favorite spat pastime because he doesn't like all the spitting in baseball. Or Mike talks about the fat lady. Now you might, some people might find that offensive, but Princess Bigness is actually very secure in her bigness and she can't go home. Uh, nor can all the fans, if there's 50,000 uh, uh, fans in a stadium, they can't leave, leave their seat until the fat lady sings, which is one of the most common <coughs> cliches of all time. God bless you. <laughs> How did you know? So Mike, Mike will report on a lot of stuff that's very unique. Uh, he brings to life a lot of sports humor, a lot of sports comics, a lot of sports cliches, and he's just a different, totally outside the box, unique sports character. Well... This sounds like a whole ton of fun. What could you share with how they get a hold of the Mike? I'm assuming you got a domain that's around that. Absolutely. Area. It's very simple. Vmike.com. That's T H E E M I K E dot com. Vmike, as in the long awaited microphone Messiah, poised to save America <laughs> from its own self induced sports culture. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You set me up. You teed me up great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going with the flow, dude. Yes. I love what I do. I love Mike. People love Mike. Um, I get so many comments from folks every day, whether it's on Twitter, on Facebook, on email. Uh, Mike is a pretty public figure. Uh, people comment. And I always put you know, some type of call to action in my blogs. Like if I write something, I always say, email me here. Tell me what you think. If I, you know, I do books of lists, I've, four, I've published 40 sports comic books. So they're it's a very simple book of lists format where I'll, I'll pick a theme. Like my number one sports selling, my number one best selling sports comic book, I'll make you laugh, is called Mike's Spiritual Sports Favorites. And people think, I thought it was a cartoon. You're getting religious on me. Just the opposite. It's, remember, I said through the lens of Mike, it's how Mike sees the sports world. So his top 10 favorite spiritual sports favorites are immaculate reception amen corner pigeon heaven the minister of defense <laughs> tim tebow so you're smiling you can see it's all these things that have religious connotations not necessarily religious i just pick up on their nicknames i write a story about it i try and keep it upbeat you know lighthearted, and people enjoy that kind of part, stuff. Of, part of the reason i'm laughing is because being a magician of course in in our uh genre if you will there's ventriloquists and a lot of times they can get away with a lot of things because it's the uh it's the dummy that's doing the talking so yes. you can do some of that with mike can't you <laughs> i've heard that countless times it's that it's it's proven that people can't stay mad long at an animated character ah. a cartoon character and the cartoon character i've I, i've created i expect him to be looked at revered uh enjoyed distributed at the same level of a SpongeBob, a Bart Simpson, a Mickey Mouse of that nature. I mean, that's how big I think this thing could be. Okay. I think that he could be a global brand. I know he could be a global brand. Well, that's kind of was uh, what I was going to ask another question. And then I want to ask my favorite question. Then we're going to sign this off. But uh, okay. so are you talking Fire about up. eventually getting into like physical characters? Is it going to be like a costume mascot kind of Mike running around at events and all that kind of stuff? It if that's one of the iterations of a licensing deal, yes, I would go there, but no, not at this time. It's Mike's a digital character, and I know that he could be utilized on television, in print, on the net, on jumbotrons and arenas and stadiums to do like a Mike Minute for in-game entertainment. So that's where I envision Mike going uh, for my next big leap. Or like a little um, puppet or something. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know. My mind's going. Sorry, I got to go. Um, so here's my big question, and that is the big why question. Why are you doing this, and why aren't you like a like coaching youth sports or something like that? You obviously like sports, so why are you doing this? 
Because I love it, because it challenges me every day when I get up. I don't feel like I, I work a day in my life. I look for things to do that I can write and publish through the voice of Mike. Uh, I was very fortunate. My wife and I had owned uh, an extremely successful computer sales agency here in Florida. We did that for a while, but it lost the, it just, it, it was meaningless anymore. Right. And we wanted to do something that was meaningful, that had purpose. And what I've created here, what we've worked on together, what we're endeavoring to do to develop it and to get it out there into the mainstream media is a huge challenge, but we're up for the task. We love it. And you can't put a price on being happy in life. And I'm very happy. Exactly. Well, with that, I'm going to sign this off. I'm looking forward to seeing some more my adventures of Mike online. I've been looking around at some of your stuff. It's kind of fun. I like Thank cartoons. You. I used to watch cartoons on, a, on Saturday mornings, and the, the, the good cartoons are kind of gone nowadays. So I'm glad Mike's coming back. Go yes, Mike. he is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, Jim. Bye-bye.